To all who come to this happy place, welcome. G'day guys, Dizzy Dave coming at you once again from Down Under with another book review. Uh, today we are doing this on the back of a, a milestone that's currently being celebrated, a, a milestone in children's literature, or in literature uh, as a whole, I suppose, which is currently being celebrated. Of course, uh, I'm talking about the 90th anniversary of Winnie the Pooh. 90 years Pooh's been around! Well, technically that's a little bit false because the character of Winnie the Pooh is actually a little bit older. Okay, so technically what we're celebrating with the 90th anniversary of Winnie the Pooh is the 90th anniversary of the publication of the book Winnie the Pooh by A.A. Milne. Now, A.A. Milne published uh, two uh, collections of short stories. They were called uh, When We Were Very Young and Now We Are Six. Uh, these are collections of short stories and poems, some of which include the characters of Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh. So while not technically Winnie the Pooh books, they do include the character in some of the stories. But this 90th anniversary celebration that's happening right now is, uh, is celebrating the release of the very first Winnie the Pooh book. Uh, so 1926, October 14, 1926, that book was released. So really this celebration is about that one book. But uh, we'll, we'll celebrate it. We'll celebrate... Winnie the Pooh being around for 90 plus years. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Uh, so uh, A.A. Milne of course published a second uh, Winnie the Pooh book, which was The House at Pooh Corner, a couple of years later. And there have since been a couple of uh, Winnie the Pooh authorised sequels, and we're going to take a look at them as well. These are all, what we're going to look at is the brand new publications of these books, which have just landed in my hot little hands over the last couple of days. So we're going to have a very quick look at them. Um, the sequels, of course, in question are uh, this one here, which is called uh, Return to the Hundred Acre Wood, which was published, I believe, in 2010, and uh, it was written by David Benedictus. So this was the very first authorised sequel to A.M. Milne's works. But what we really want to take a look at today is the brand new publication, The Best Bear in All the World, which has been written by various uh, children's authors, Paul Bright, Brian Sibley, Jean Willis, and Kate Saunders. Now, of course, Brian Sibley is the man who uh, is very well known as, as one of the... Uh, or is, is the most respected scholar on Winnie the Pooh. He uh, published a, a book on the history of A.A. Milne and Winnie the Pooh uh, a few years ago. I believe there's a, uh, as a new edition of that coming out very soon, I've heard from Brian. Um, so uh, that'll be one to look out for as well when that comes out. But this is one that everyone's really excited to get their hands on because it's the brand new collection of short stories and of course it introduces a brand new character which is in Brian's story. Um, so I'll reveal that in a minute, although I'm sure it doesn't need revealing because if you are watching this you probably know about the new character, but we'll take a look at the new character. So we're taking a look at those two. Of course all, uh, what, all f uh, six of these Winnie the Pooh books have been republished in this format. Now, if you've watched my previous books, you know that I'm a big online shopper and I buy my books online because they're very cheap online. Now, what I wanted to do was I wanted to get a collection of all six books in this smaller format, just like a nice, concise, hardback collection of all six books individually. Now, they did publish uh, A.A. Milne's four books in this size and this format. Um, earlier in the year and I saw a listing for Winnie the Pooh the complete collection I understood it when I read the listing uh, To be fair it was really late at night when I was looking at this listing But I understood the listing to be all four of these books in a slip covered volume What I wound up with was this humongous That's the front this humongous Winnie the Pooh complete collection stories and poems. It's one volume. It's got all four books in there. Now, on one hand, I'm going, oh, no, I wanted all of them in a little concise collection. But on the other hand, I'm going, wow, I got this really oversized, really beautifully bound book for really cheap. Cheaper than I would have paid if I'd bought the uh, four books individually. So one part of me is going, Oh, that is just a beautiful book. It's awesome. The other part of me is going, 
Oh, I wanted all six in one concise collection, but uh, that's just the OCD getting the best of me. So uh, we're going to brush that out of our minds and we're going to take a look at these three books here. Mostly we're going to take a look at the brand new publication of the best beer in all the world and then we're going to just a uh, very quick skim over the other two publications here as well. So come with me over to the desk and uh, we'll, we'll open them up and we'll have a look. Better grab the books, that might help. Alright, let's go. Okay, so firstly we're going to take a uh, look at this one. Now to give you a good idea of the uh, size differences between uh, the large format one here and the uh, small ones, you're looking at uh, about that much of a difference there. So again, if you want a nice concise collection of the smaller ones, you can get the four books that are contained in this one in the smaller format. Uh, but conversely, you cannot get, at this stage anyway, you cannot get um, hard cover, uh, you cannot get large format versions of these uh, two sequels. I'm not sure if they plan on releasing large format ones. Uh, if they do, my dream of owning a concise collection may be, uh, may be coming true. Now, one thing that we notice here, of course, is Winnie the Pooh 90th anniversary. This is a little sticker here. Now, uh, this sticker was actually on the uh, shrink wrap when I got this, and I just transferred it over to the book because it really completes the cover of the book. Now, if we want to take a look at this, I don't know. Oh, you can see it. When I shine the light on this, this is all this really beautiful, uh, glossy sort of white. The Black, I believe, is the, the part that's actually glossy. Oh no, the whole thing, yeah, the white and the black here. This really nice glossy thing which separates it from a more matte finish on the actual book itself. And that carries over, uh, actually that doesn't carry over to the back, sorry. The back is uh, just matte completely across the whole thing. The front is really beautiful, it's got this really nice uh, gloss to it and that actually carries over onto these smaller format ones. We've got this really beautiful uh, artwork here. Now the artwork in the two, on the two sequels here is done by Mark Burgess. So I would hazard a guess that this uh, artwork here, um, actually I'm not too sure, this may be original artwork from within the book. Um, I haven't looked at this, uh, I haven't looked at these works for um, so long. To me it kind of looks like new artwork, but this could be old artwork uh, by E.H. Shepard. Um, and look, that is a, that's a, that's a compliment to Mark Burgess, because um, I, I sort of, I almost can't tell the difference between the two drawing styles. But I, it would make sense if this is an E.H. E. Uh, e. Shepard uh, sketch on the front here, but it is uh, uh, to credit of Mark Burgess, if that's the case, that he has really matched this style. Now, I also will note that the Win the Pooh 90th Anniversary uh, piece on this cover is a sticker as well, and I'm assuming the four other volumes of the actual A.A. Milne stories uh, will have the sticker. But strangely, Best Bear in All the World, that's actually on the cover, it's not a sticker. It's shiny, but that's actually part of the cover. It's printed on there. Uh, or however they get foil onto a cover. That's actually part of the cover. And the sticker's a little bit different. This one says uh, Winnie the Pooh 90th Anniversary, whereas this one reads an authorised sequel. So a little bit different, but I uh, thought it was worth noting anyway. Something interested I noticed. So, nice big slip cover. Let's have a look at the spine. I might have to zoom out for this. Um, there's a spine there. It's all matte. Completely matte, but really beautiful. And look, these do look really nice on the shelves. Now, of course, these will sit a little higher on my shelf rather than like that. But they, they do look quite nice next to each other, so I'm not too fussed about that. So, let's zoom back in. Some of all that other stuff crowding up my picture. So, we'll take it out of this slipcover. And we come to this really gorgeous, I'm sorry about the shadow from the camera, it does ruin it a little bit, but uh, you get the idea. You get this really gorgeous uh, picture, this is the back, of course. This is like a fabric, and then you've got this, uh, this artwork printed onto the fabric. And of course the front cover of the book is, uh, is transferred across to this fabric here. And this is actually really glossy as well, it's really nice. 
This is a really, really beautiful book. So open it up. Now, this is actually a book. If you're a Winnie the Pooh fan, you will have seen this book before. This, uh, as it says here, the complete collection was originally published in 1994. This beautiful edition has been produced to celebrate the 90th anniversary of the publication of the very first stories about Winnie the Pooh. Now, I believe I have the first edition of this uh, complete collection and stories uh, the complete collection of stories and poems. I believe I had this as a kid. Um, so I was, uh, yeah, I was a kid. I would have been about three years old in 1994. So this would have been one of the books I grew up with and now I have this new edition of it. So that does make this uh, really special. So if you have seen the old edition, now skimming through it, I am having flashbacks of childhood. This is definitely a book I owned. I do know this book, definitely. Um, of course you've got this beautiful little uh, yellow ribbon in there to help you keep your spot. I of course do not have children, so I will be reading these to myself. But if I do have kids one day, I would like to sit and read them these uh, wonderful Winnie the Pooh stories. Now what I haven't mentioned is, of course, this isn't Disney. Um, of course, Winnie the Pooh is a character in Disney films. Walt Disney didn't make Walt Disney film. Uh, sorry, Walt Disney did not make uh, films about Winnie the Pooh until the late 1960s. So Winnie the Pooh is uh, pretty much one of the earliest examples of um, actual literature um, that Walt Disney picked and uh, had to buy the rights, uh, film rights for the characters. So, uh, there you go, Winnie the Pooh didn't actually start as a Disney character. Of course, all the early Disney films, as are most Disney films, are based on previous, uh, previously existing characters and stories. But this was one of the, one of the very first ones where um, Disney actually had to go and actively get the rights to use these characters. But, of course, over the years, we do come, we've come to... Um, to, uh, I suppose, believe that, that the Disney character of Winnie the Pooh is the original version, but that's not the case. Uh, the Disney version is probably the most iconic version of it, especially since uh, a couple of generations of, of children have grown up with it. But of course, before that, many generations of children grew up with A. M. Mellon's original um, Pooh. So of course, I did flip through it a little bit there, but I will, as you can see, these stories at the back They've published the books in backwards order, basically, so when we were very young and uh, now we are six, which were the very first two books published, are uh, printed at the back of the book. And look, as you can see, some of these stories don't have Winnie the Pooh in them, but the artwork is gorgeous. Um, but the, first, the books at the very front, Winnie the Pooh and the House at Pooh Corner, are uh, published there as well. And the artwork is stunning, of course, the E.H. Shepherd uh, sketches in here. Absolutely gorgeous. So there you go. So that's all that's all four of the original books in one hardcover pressing Again, if you are a big fan of, of Winnie the Pooh if you grew up reading these stories You may have seen the previous uh, or the original printing the original binding of the complete uh, stories and poems. I love that I it's sort of come full circle in a way. I really love that I have both versions of this book now. Um, and look, this is going to go on display in here in the in the library. Uh, I don't know where the other version is. I don't know where my original version is, but it's going to be knocking around the house somewhere, probably in the roof or something. So uh, this will do me for now. Now we're going to take a very, 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 very quick look at this one here. Don't want to spend too much time on it. Of course, it is the uh, Return to the Hundred Acre Wood, which, as I said, was the very first um, uh, authorised sequel book uh, written by David Benedictus. It's a, it's a bunch of short stories uh, which are inspired by A. M. Milne's work. Uh, the uh, sketches in here, or as it says on the cover, the decorations are by Mark Burgess. So it's just a very quick look at this book again um, all four of A. Milne's books are in this format as well uh, there's a blue one, a yellow one, a red one and I can't remember what the other colour is uh, but they do exist so this is the uh, return to the hundred acre wood but at least I have all the stories in some format now I like this too, you take the slipcover off and there's 
beautiful little uh, sketch there. Now I would hazard a guess and say that that could be the original uh, cover for the book. That's really gorgeous. So I'm a little disappointed that I don't get all the books in this format. I mean, I always can, and maybe if they drop down to 10 bucks or 15 bucks or something, I might pick them up just to satisfy the OCD, but uh, really there's no need to, especially with this, that gorgeous, uh, hard, that gorgeous large, large format we looked at. Now we do see the, the artwork is noticeably different, but it's very, 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 very faithful to the, uh, to the old artwork. Now you notice I'm not opening it all the way, it's very stiff. And I'm one that doesn't really like to press down books, and I just like them to be like this, basically. Um, now this one's got a ribbon in there as well, you can see a black ribbon. I don't want to spend too much time on this, because that's not what we're here to have a look at. What we're really here for today is this brand new publication, which is the best bear in all the world. Uh, which I said before is the second, um, second authorised sequel of Winnie the Pooh Works, and it's just been published to celebrate the 90th anniversary of the book. Uh, this has got four stories in it, uh, one by Paul Bright, one by Brian Sibley, one by Gene Willis, one by Kate Saunders, as I said before. Now we take off the dust jacket here. Really beautiful artwork on the cover of this one as well. And a really nice little picture here too. Now we're actually going to take that off because I want to take a proper look at this one. Because this is a brand new book, I'm, I'm assuming there's probably a few people out there who would like to have a look at the insides of this book. There it is. Nice and shiny. Absolutely beautiful. Really beautiful publications these are. So of course we start off with a map of the 100 acre wood as all the books do. Nice little touch. Best bear in all the world. Really, really beautiful um, little uh, decorations in here. Exposition. Let's have a read of this. 90, said Winnie the Pooh. Is that more than seven? Yes, Pooh, said Kanga patiently. You're 90 years old, which calls for a celebration. A celebration, said Eeyore gloomily. Oh, a celebration said Eeyore gloomily. That's better. A song and a dance. I suppose I'm 92. That explains a great deal, but no whopping and what not for Eeyore. 92? asked Piglet, a little confused. But if Pooh was only 90, at which point Tigger bounced up and Piglet sat down in a hurry. You see, someone had heard and another person had mentioned and then somebody had decided that it was time to share some more of Winnie the Pooh's adventures, as being 90 years old was a very great thing. So all the animals in the forest came together to hear the stories for themselves. Pooh had, in all the excitement, forgotten what many of them were about, and hoped that his friends were in them, and that he came off all right. While Pooh needn't have worried, in these adventures, he encounters mythical creatures, mysterious new friends and foes, and a peculiar type of source. They're the kind of adventures, adventures, I've got adventures on the mind. They are the kind of adventures that just seem to happen in the Hundred Acre Wood. So settle down, sit back and enjoy four new stories about the best bear in all the world, Winnie the Pooh and his friends. So there you go. So that gives you an idea of what this book's about. The chapters are uh, separated by the seasons. We've got autumn, in which Pooh and Piglet prepare to meet a dragon. Winter, in which Penguin arrives in the forest as our brand new character uh, from Brian Sibley, Penguin. Spring, in which Eeyore suspects another donkey is after his thistles. And summer, in which Pooh dreams of the source of the Nile. Now that's uh, spelled S-A-U-C-E, a uh, little play on words there, because Pooh does like his uh, food, doesn't he? He's a little, little hungry little bear with a rumbly little tummy. Okay. So here we go. This is the new book. We're just going to take a look. The artwork in this is absolutely stunning. Some really, really beautiful decorations in here. What you come to expect from a Pooh book. Um, of course we've got the... Uh, little ribbon in here as well, as we do in all the other books. How beautiful is this? This is Brian's book. Um, Brian himself has said that um, he was a little nervous when they asked him to uh, write a book about a penguin, uh, write a story about a penguin in the Hundred Acre Wood. Which is a bit odd because penguins like the cold environments and the Hundred Acre Wood is, well, it's a forest. Um, but then Brian remembered, well, if there's a bear living in the wood with a tiger who should be in Africa, 
and a pig and a kangaroo, which should be in Australia, and, uh, and an old owl and a rabbit. I mean, why can't a penguin exist in the 100 acre wood? And that's the charm of it, isn't it? It's all these animals, really they're, they're toys, aren't they? They're the toys of Christopher Robin, and these are the adventures that Christopher Robin is having with his, with his toys. And that's the charm of the 100 acre wood. There's all these characters that really shouldn't be friends with each other, that are. In essence, that sort of carries across to Toy Story, doesn't it? Where uh, a spaceman is friends with a cowboy, because they're toys. Now these are characters in the beautiful children's book, and there's our little penguin pal. I'm yet to read this, but it, it looks absolutely really beautiful, this story, especially it looks really charming. I mean, all the, book, all the stories in here look, look charming. Uh, it looks like a really enchanting book. Uh, I have to close it because, as I say, whenever I do a book review, I don't want to look through the entire book and spoil the magic of the first time you go and you open it and you skim through every single page. So there's a very brief little look at this, but I have to say this is this is beautiful. This is a really nice little book, and if they do do a large uh, uh, format publication of this, I will I will definitely consider getting that as well because this is a really special book. And if you're a Winnie the Pooh fan. You have all the other books, or you at least have A.A. Milne's four books. This book is a definite must-have. I mean, it's an anniversary celebration. It's just a really special little beautiful publication right there. There's our dust cover once again. This is a must-own for any Winnie the Pooh fan. Look, I'm a big Disney fan, as we know, and I'm a fan of all the stories. And I would actually hazard a guess to say that my first encounter with Winnie the Pooh was probably in A.A. Milne's stories because my mother would have read them to me when I was, uh, when I was a child. Um, and there's sort of a comfort in that, knowing that the first version of Pooh that you came across, Winnie the Pooh, rather, that you came across, uh, was the original stories and not Disney's version of them, which is what we've all come to know and love. Um, but, you know, uh, Pooh is Pooh, and Pooh is a great character, and... Uh, it's really nice to celebrate the 90th anniversary in such a special way. Um, so of course, I won't, I won't waste your time by watching me put that back on. Of course, these are the ones that I've got my hands on. There's that one, there is uh, this one here, Return to the 100 Acre Wood, and then of course the large format version, which is pretty much, it's actually double the size of these here. You could double it up. There you go, it is, it's double the size of of them put next to each other. So there you go. Okay, so let's grab these and we'll head over and we'll do a very quick wrap up. Okay, thank you for watching this video. I'm gonna sign off now. Uh, now, I did buy these on Book Depository. If you've seen my other videos, uh, you know that I swear by these guys. They are absolutely awesome for getting books to you. They are cheap. This is the cheapest place to get books right now. I mean, I am getting books much cheaper than I used to be able to get books for on Amazon. If I were to buy these books on Amazon, I'd be probably paying $10, $15 more, Amazon US or UK. But it all comes down to where you live in the world. So do your research and just have a look at all the websites, uh, look in your shops and stuff, and just find what is the best deal for you. For myself living in Australia, Book Depository is just sort of the best option for uh, books. Any kind of books, hardcover books, soft paperback books, whatever. Usually Book Depository is the, is the best place for me to get books really cheap. Now these smaller, smaller editions, which I had a look at, these were about $20 Australian. Um, I think one was $19 and one was $20 or something like that. Um, as I said, they have published all six books in this format. So there's an entire series of, uh, of these six books. Um, and they are all about, at, at the moment, I mean prices fluctuate on Book Depository from day to day, but at the moment they're all ranging from about $20 Australian, which is what, probably about £12, uh, maybe about, uh, what about 15 American dollars probably, um, but again, depending on where you are in the world, uh, the prices are going to be different and uh, Look, Amazon might be cheaper where you are. Your local bookstore might be cheaper where you are. Just do your research, and if you want these books, um, source them down and, and find out what is the best option for you. This uh, Winnie the Pooh collection, the complete collection, was about $55, I think, which is actually really good for this kind of book with this kind of binding. And the slipcover and everything, 
Really, really good price for that. Um, if I if I had uh, purchased all four of the books individually, I would have paid you know 80 bucks for them. So 50 bucks, and I get them in this really nice, beautiful hardcover. I mean, I do win. This is a win because this is not what I was expecting. Although I wanted the smaller ones, I've saved money and I've got them in a larger format and I mean, I can't complain with that because this is absolutely beautiful and I like this. I love it, I'm gonna cherish it. I'm gonna cherish all these books. And then when I do the 100th anniversary, maybe then will I uh, be able to get a nice concise collection of these books. Uh, but uh, anyway, I've got them now and I'm really happy with them. So, at that, that's all I have to say on this matter today. Um, I've done a lot of book reviews lately, haven't I? But um, I promise you we will be having some film reviews, DVD, uh, Blu-ray reviews uh, and some interviews coming up very very soon so stay tuned if that's something that you sound like you, that, that, that you think you may be interested in that, if that sounds like something you think you may be interested in, that's what I'm trying to say uh, give me a uh, subscribe over here on the YouTube give me a like on the Facebook and just keep up to date with everything that's going on on this channel. So thank you once again for watching and I hope that I will see you uh, sometime in the future. Uh, until then, I hope you have a magical day.